call the special meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bulk? Uh, excuse. Decker? Unexcused. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunas? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Excuse. Surik? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 13 ayes. Quorum is present. At this time, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Madam Sue Richards will lead us. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Matters laid over, President Hanna. Matters uh, laid over 1555 through 1650. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, make a motion to accept and file the ROs 15 55, 16 20 26, and 16 27, and accept and adopt the RCs from 1432 through 1650. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Alderman Rahasel. Thank you, Your Honor. I just had a few questions regarding document 1541. Okay. And again, just to clarify, I tried to take an opportunity right before the meeting to talk 15, to... Uh, 1521? 1541. Oh, 1641, I'm no. sorry. 15, 1541. 15, 15, 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. Looking at some of the larger increases here, we've got police and fire, seen nearly a six and over a seven percent increase. Just to clarify again, is that a is that purely salary? Are there any other figures involved with that, or is it purely a manpower number? Um, yes, the majority of it is salary and benefits, and then another large piece of it is the unfunded pension liability that was added in two, for 2009 to help fund that unfunded pension liability that was mandated by the state to cover. Okay. And then also on, would be the second page of the spreadsheet, we talked just a little bit there, the ambulance fund, you clarified exactly what it is, and it's essentially a, a departmental figure of operating using just marginal cost, which I follow. Um, but could you explain the increase year over year, 22%? Um, part of the increases in the second year is the largest one, I believe, is the fuel charges. They, as of, as everybody has experienced in 2008, the fuel charges increased significantly from what they planned. And then so they appropriately planned for that. And um, the other increases were just for additional medical supplies that they needed. They do ha are seeing a higher level of runs, so there are additional costs that were not budgeted last year based on the lower number of runs that they were experiencing. So it's part due to activity and part due to inflationary costs. Okay, so the, you'd say the medical supplies that are going to correlate with the increased call numbers? Yes, that and then also the fuel costs in addition to the increasing energy costs, which are decreasing now. but. Um, the fuel costs will also increase as you see more runs. Right, so we're budgeting, I don't know what the breakdown is between the medical supplies and the fuel, but we've obviously budgeted for a pretty huge fuel increase in 09. We budgeted for a large fuel increase and then there's also um, salary and benefits that were due to the contractual obligations of the city that also in, play a factor in that as well. Okay. Um, so there, it's a little bit of everything adds up to be a, a larger amount. But our, our basically, I guess, what I just distill it all down into one fact is the cost of running the ambulance service is up just about 22%. Yes, it's up. And then also yeah. the revenues projected are, revenues are also up. Um, I don't know the percentage offhand, but the revenues are Are they also anywhere near increased. that figure, do you know? Um, I believe the budgeted amount, they anticipate contributing a, about an additional 100000 than than what they projected this year for next year. Percentage-wise, what does that break into? 10% or something? 100,000? Um, 
a 50% revenue increase is planned in 09. Net income. Okay. Yeah, from 08 to 09. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I just want to, don't mean to beat this thing to death, but I just wanted to make sure I understand. So our projected net this year is roughly 200000 on that ambulance fund, and you're saying net, even after these increases, net next year could be close to 300000 Yes, the amount that we anticipated um, for a fund equity increase this year, which was 180000 next wow. year what we anticipate is contributing to the general fund from the ambulance fund is 341000 So it's actually $160,000 higher, higher than what we anticipated. Okay. Even this with year. these additional costs. That is correct. Thank you. Mr. President Bond. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, but then, Terry, uh, getting back to the ambulance, then some of that, some of that three hundred thousand dollars in the general fund will be carryover receivables from two thousand and eight. I'm not trying to split hairs, but some of it. I mean, we're going to be collecting money from two thousand and eight well into two thousand and nine, which. But I know we're going to track that to see how it actually turns out. But that'll be part of the $300,000 that'll be going to the general fund. Part of it will be 2008 revenues, yeah? That is correct. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, motion on the floor. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? And Wangaman. Uh, I'm sorry. Did I not call you? Hannah? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> 13 eyes. Motion carries. 1653 RC number 3440809 by finance to whom was referred resolution number 1470809 by Alderman Gish, Alderman Gisha, Clayunas Born, Bauk, and Montemayor, ordering the 2009 budget appropriations for the city of Sheboygan funds, recommends that the attached substitute resolution be passed. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. And the resolution be put upon its passage. Thank you. Substitute resolution. Pardon me, the substitute Thank resolution. You. And there was a second. And second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call roll. Decker. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this is not a good night. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heiderman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Meyer, Montemayor, <clears throat> excuse me, Rinfleisch, Aye. Zurich, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Wangeman, and Board. Aye. 13 eyes. Motion carries. 1654 RC number 3450809 by finance to whom was referred resolution number 1480809 by all, our, all persons Gisha, Clayunas, Born, Bauk, and Montemayor ordering the 2009 budget appropriations and the 2009 tax levy for use during the calendar year 2009 recommends that the attached substitute resolution be passed. Uh, Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution put upon its passage. Is there a sec second? Motion and second under discussion. Your Honor, if I may continue, I'd like to make an amendment. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, this is uh, this is a, a transfer, an internal transfer out of cost center 105-100. Title of that cost center uh, code description is real estate taxes. I move that, uh, and I believe Madam City Clerk has a copy of this, so I'll try to be. There's a lot of numbers. Uh, I move that the that amount of real estate taxes be reduced by an even amount of $128,000 and that the expenditures uh, parallel that be reduced in account number 199900. This is the general government expense and benefit account and reduced, do I have to go through every one of these, Sue? Or, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, Account number 510152, titled Vacation, reduced $13,147. Account number, these are all subs of 199900. Uh, account number 510301, Social Security, reduced by $11,687. Uh, 
account number 510302, titled Wisconsin Retirement Fund, reduced $7,304. Account number 510303, titled Health Insurance, reduced by $19,900. Uh, account number 510401, titled Vacation, reduced $24,834. And finally, account number 510402, titled Sick Leave, reduced $51,128. Those reductions total $128,000. Um, and if I might go on to explain as best I can. If you'd like. Or I have Terry Hansen do it if you wish. Um, this is a... Uh, this is to comply with the council's resolution of the five cent drop in the uh, in the levy. So tax rate. Pardon me, the tax rate. Uh, so what we're doing is we're we're reducing the revenue in that first account, and then we're reducing expenses in the second account. This came from Terry to uh, comply with the with the council resolution. Okay. And if the fund needs to be discussed, I think Terry's better to discuss that than I. The, uh the council did pass a resolution dropping the tax rate five cents as the numbers came in. The final numbers, as you know, I keep calling this document a fluid document, but as the numbers came in and we recalculated, uh, there was an adjustment that needed to be made to make sure that we honor the resolution and drop the tax rate by five cents. So that money is being transferred from one account to the next. Pretty much it. President Anna. Mr. Mayor, do we need a separate vote on that amendment? Yes, we're going to get a, there's been a, a motion and a second. Okay. Who seconded it? Oh. Second. Yeah, I'll okay. tell you in a second. So the motion is on there. Is there no discussion on the amendment only? Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Alderman Rehm, please. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think I would like Mr. Hansen to express, explain exactly what the, the consequences of that is. I mean, I understand that myself. People at home may not have fully appreciation that are we just magically working numbers and moving numbers around to get to, get to what we promised, or is there an impact with these reductions somewhere? The impact, um, the account that we're reducing, the expenditures that we're reducing, are expenditures that are set aside for when employees retire. Over the last three years, we've seen minimal usage of that account. Um, there's a fair amount that is set aside in that cost center. And what we're going to do is we're going to reduce it. And if we do need that money when people re do retire, you do see a natural savings when people retire because there's usually a, tip, a lower salary that's coming on board. And then also they're not eligible for health insurance right away. So we would see some natural savings and we could use those savings to replenish this account if that account needs those funds for that for that retirement payout, vacation, and, and sick leave that's due based on contractual obligations. Thank you. I'm sorry. Just so everybody knows, the uh, the account has $475,411 and has been basically inactive for the last three years. And uh, this would be for 09 retirements. It doesn't have anything to do with our early retirements this year. <clears throat> and uh, frankly, what we're reducing it at is the same amount we nor we would have funded it at. And if we would have funded it, it wouldn't have been used again for four years. So thank you. Okay, on the amendment, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 13 ayes. The amendment carries. <laughs> President Hannah. Well, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget by reducing the general fund Police Facility Professional Services by 129.922 and increasing the general fund police facility personnel expenditures by 129.922 to accommodate the allocation of two full-time janitors for cleaning and maintenance of the police facility instead of contracting the same service. Do you want me to run down the details before there's a second? Just, just the amounts and the, and the category, okay. professional services. Our professional services, that would be uh, negative 129.922. Regular salaries, 80000 Social Security, 6120 uh, WRF, 8320 Health insurance, 32954 Life, 72 Dental, 2264 Workers' Comp, 192 Is there, is there a second? Second. Under discussion. There is. Alderman Gleason. 
Om Magisha. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it, just so the public understands, and and maybe those who have been following this this closely, the Finance Committee recommended and passed moving that same dollar amount from salaries to professional services. The purpose of the discussion in finance was uh, that we have not gone through an RFP process to see if we could have a service perform it less than the 129,992. Um, personal feeling, uh, other committee members can express, I, I feel that from a finance committee standpoint, that's our obligation, is to make sure we're spending the money correctly. So there was an RFP that's been sitting around for a while, I believe, um, it, for whatever reason, it wasn't moving through. Um, and that's what the finance committee recommended, not to reduce anybody's budget, but to set the money aside into professional services so that we can go through an RFP process first. If it doesn't turn out to be more cost effective to go to a, to a uh, contract service, then by all means, uh, hire or retain employees. But I believe what this does is, and please somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, is moves two employees from DPW who has experienced a, a significant budget drop this year to the police department to become janitors. And I don't have any problem with that as long as we've gone through the normal necessary steps of seeing if it's the best thing to do for the taxpayers. And the only way you can do that is to do an RFP. And that's what the Finance Committee recommended was to do an RFP to see if it's cost effective to do this. What's better when you put them side by side? Uh, what's better for the taxpayers and for our budget and for those who are trying to make ends meet these days? So that was the recommendation of the Finance Committee. I'll be voting against this amendment because I still think it's prudent to go through the RFP process. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. I um, was going to ask for the clarification, which I received. I, I voted um, the opposite of Alderman Gish, I can't remember how the motion was on the floor, I mean, or on, at the table on finance. Um, I believe that it's in the best interest of the police department to have uh, city employees doing the security, uh, cleaning, cleaning in secure areas. I think at this point, um, we uh, are doing the police department a better service by having city employees uh, working there and uh, being under the watchful eye of the city government rather than <coughs> contracting out uh, for those areas. So I will be voting yes for this. Thank you. What's that, Warren? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm not going to support. I'm not going to support the amendment, and I'm not. It's basically for the same reasons that uh, that Alderman Gisha mentioned. But uh, I, uh, I really, if the if the numbers come out that it's a cost advantage to have a private uh, janitorial service do the janitorial work over at the police department. Uh, then I would support it. And if it isn't, then our fine workers from Public Works can do it. But we do have the obligation of the taxpayers to take a look at it. Uh, I personally do not have any problem with a private cleaning service going into, uh, going into the police department. Uh, most major corporations, government offices, including the Pentagon, which is probably the most highly secure air, uh, government agency in the United States, has a private cleaning service. So. If the numbers, if the numbers say stay with Public Works, I'm all in favor of it. But I do want to take a look and make sure the see what the RFP says uh, before I make a final decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as a a a matter of, of belief, I, I would think that the uh, the public entities can come. Th excuse me, the private entities can come through with a lower budget, an RFP, uh, to do the cleaning. Um, uh, however, on the, uh, so normally I would support that uh, in general. This time around, I'm, I'm not going to support. It. I'm going to support the uh, the amendment, only because today we woke up and then we had several inches of snow on the ground that way. Um, and if we have another winter, if we do need to go back and find new people to hire in public and public works department, we have two people that have had the experience, have already been trained. Yes, they'll be at the police department, um, you know, cleaning in there and doing janitorial work, but. That's someone that we can utilize then as a city down the road if we have another winter like we did, instead of having to go out and hire new people. So I do see the cost savings that you would have by having a private um, entity clean the police station will be erased if we have another snowfall like, like we did last year. Um, I drove around this morning about 6, 6.30 and the streets were in bad shape. I hear outside there's somebody moving snow outside right now. You know, It doesn't take a whole lot of snow for, for those expenses to go. So I'd be supportive of keeping at least the, the city payroll workers on this time around 
uh, and probably only this time around, for that simple fact that then at least we have some a fully trained uh, staff that we can rely on down the road for help. And if we ever go to rehire, we have somebody that's already done the work that we don't have to train again if we do expand the Public Works Department down the road. So I will be supporting this. Thank you. Um, Kilson. Thank you, Your Honor. I just would have to uh, agree with Alderman Reinfleisch and Alderman Kleunis. We need to keep our, uh, our city workers here. And uh, I would uh, agree, uh, yes, with the amendment that uh, we go along with, with keeping those two uh, uh, to uh, retain them at the police department. Thank you. Thank you. Final comment. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, there are other options. You could move the cleaning people who are city employees from City Hall and make them cleaners at the police station. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, for if you're concerned about security issues. Um, second, this is $130,000. That means we're paying for basic janitorial work on a brand new building. Do the math. Divide by 130 divided by two. It's been a long day. $65,000. $65,000. Is that, can you tell me if you're going to hire a janitor for $65,000 for any business in this town and, or any corporation in this town, you name it, and you're going to succeed? Of course you're not. You would never do that. So why are we doing it here? You would never do it if it was your house. You'd never do it if it was your business. You just wouldn't do that. You couldn't. You would fail. And that's why our budget will fail in the future. And that's why the state budget is failing now. It's, you just can't do that and survive. It's what the market bears. And if it bears out on the RFP, then fine. But I can't imagine. And I know these are hardworking, good people who have families and have issues just like all the rest of us. And I'm not immune to any of those issues and won't be, and, or anybody else. But $65,000 to sweep the, the new police station times two. I'm sorry, I just, uh, you wouldn't do it in your own household, but doing it with the taxpayer's money is somehow different? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't support that. Thank you. Thank you. On the amendment, please call the roll. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? Yes. Klein I'm sorry? Aye. Thank you. Kalyunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? Aye. Ten ayes, three noes. Motion carries. Okay. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. One more amendment. Uh, I make a motion to amend the proposed budget by reducing professional services in HR and increasing professional services in the Police and Fire Commission by $18,500 to accommodate the anticipated costs of recruiting and hiring the Chief of Police and appropriate Police Department personnel for 2009. Switching from one to another, no increase in budget. Second. 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 Under discussion. Thank you. The Finance Committee, I believe, voted unanimously to make this change. They didn't vote to remove $18,500 from the budget. They voted to remove it from the Police and Fire Commission and put it into the HR, which has always paid these bills. The purpose of the 18.5 would be to, for the purpose of hiring. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of hiring going on with the police department. You might need to bring people in. You might need to do whatever. Uh, cost of vetting them and running. Um, uh, background searches and stuff, that's expensive stuff. So the Finance Committee certainly didn't have any problem with the expenditure. I don't believe there's ever been an expenditure for, for them before besides their normal salaries. Uh, and I believe they get a stipend, a financial stipend annually for being on that commission. What we pr proposed was not giving an unelected commission, and I don't care if it's this one or anyone in the world, their own checkbook. We have a check and balance system here. If they want to go out and, and do their, their statutory work, that's great. We have to support that. But in the past, it's my understanding, it's always been moved out of the finance, the expense has always been moved out of the finance, I mean, pardon me, the HR budget, and not given a blank check to people who aren't elected. So we have no check and balance if we do this. We have no way of approving these expenditures. We have no way of doing anything, which is our job, I thought. Um, so I had no problem with the expenditures, but keeping it in HR versus 
the Police and Fire Commission was the recommendation of the Finance Committee for that reason. I will clear, clarify though, it is not a blank check. Nothing is a blank check to anybody when we do city business. The Police and Fire Commission, there is a cost center for that cost category that's been there for many, many years, long before we've been here and probably longer after we're gone. Uh, in the past, they were appropriated uh, funding uh, as uh, cuts were made, that funding sort of went away. Uh, so did basically the need. Uh, but now the need is there and that cost uh, category is still in, in the budget. And uh, as Alderman Montemayor said, it was already put in that cost center. Finance took it off, put it on HR. All that the motion is asking is put it back where the original budget had it, pretty much. Alderman Verhassel, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. I think it's a good idea just from the standpoint of cutting red tape. I, you know, if we run it through HR as it was uh, requested, we're looking at anywhere from two to four weeks minimum to get information processed or request processed. I think we should give the PFC a little bit of slack here to do something that's very important, hiring our new police chief. I, uh, from a standpoint of checks and balances, I'm comfortable between uh, Terry Hansen, our finance director, and yourself that we've got enough checks and balances in place that we're not giving anybody a proverbial blank check on this. So I'm pretty comfortable with it. I think it does an excellent job cutting red tape. Alderman Rainfleisch, you're next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess for clarification purposes, the uh, um, cost center of the, the PFC, uh, any expenditures that went out of it would not come across finance desks or our desks, is that correct? Like we do see the finance committee recommending you know, from one cost center to the other, or will it still come across and we'll still see what the expenditures are, expenditures are for? You'll still see the expenditures, but not necessarily for approval, just like everybody else, every department. All right. Thank you. Alderman uh, Hanna, Vice oh. President, President Hanna. Thank you. Yeah, that really was a field of motion. Um, yeah, my real, my real question, will Terry be monitoring the expenditures? Absolutely, just like we do every one of them. Just like we do every one of them. Correct? That is correct. <laughs> I jumped in, apologize. Uh, Holman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. Just want to clarify this one more time for me. I need to understand. Can you're, We're moving. The, my original budget had yes. $18,500 in the Police and Fire Commission cost center, cost okay. category. For what purpose? For the uh, hiring of the new police chief, and I believe there's maybe some money for training or something, but it's primarily for the new changes that are being made. Okay. And quite frankly, I don't think it's going to be enough, but at least it's a start. Okay. Finance Committee shifted it to Human Resources Department. And, and under their cost under, category. Okay. And all I'm asking is, all the motions asking to put it back where it was originally in the budget so that the Police and Fire Commission can proceed without the delays that Alderman or Hassel is saying it. As far as the check and balances, the council always oversees expenditures and so does, so do I and so does the Finance Department. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. On the amendment. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clay Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hassel? Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heideman? No. Eight ayes, five noes. Motion carries. Okay, I need a motion to, uh, to approve the final budget as amended. Alderman oh, Gisha? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I make a motion that the uh, the RC be accepted and adopted, and the resolution, the amended resolution, be put upon its passage. Second. Passage of the budget, yes. Uh, thank you. And second? Uh, thank you. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going, to, I'm going to support the entire budget, even though the last two amendments I didn't agree with, but there was so much heavy lifting in this budget, and I think it's an outstanding budget. First of all, I want to thank you, Mayor, for your efforts. I want to thank Terry Hansen. Uh, I want to thank, uh, thank in particular to the department head, uh, Bill Bittner, who I think of Public Works, who probably had the heaviest lifting of any department head to make the cuts that were necessary to balance this budget. We started out earlier this year with a $1.7 million structural deficit, and yet we were able to balance this budget and also cut the rate by a nickel. So I think, uh, uh, and I also want to thank my fellow members of the uh, 
of the Finance Committee and the rest of the Council. I think it's really a job well done and just thank you to all who had a part of it and I'm going to support it. Thank you. Alderman Reflesh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess to echo Alderman Boren's or Vice President Boren's comments, um, the list is long and, and, and distinguished of who needs to be thanked for working on the budget. Um, and really can't add to that. Um, however, I remember before I ran the first time, six years ago, uh, as an alderman watching the committee meetings, uh, the especially the budget one at home, and wondering, what are they doing? You have these huge amounts, dollar amounts, and they're all voting aye. Um, and, and I agree, there's a lot of things in the budget that I, that I don't necessarily support, but the work done on the budget is done, not today, but it's been done in the last six months, eight months, almost a year. And we'll be starting then next year's one right away uh, as we look at whatever state aids we may or may not get from the state. Uh, so I want people at home to understand that it has been something that we've all been working very diligently on very hard uh, for a long period of time. And it's not that we, don't, we take our job very seriously uh, to do it all, look at all the I's and T's and make sure they're dotted and crossed. Um, and thank everybody here that's done their work to make sure that we have been able to balance the, the, the budget and fix the structural deficit we've had and lower the tax rate. Uh, I think it's a spectacular job that uh, the, the mayor can be proud of and that the older persons present here today can be proud of. Thank you. Thank you. And one more, all moment to my own. Thank you, Your Honor. A third person to say thank you so much. I think accolades especially to Terry Hansen and Mayor Perez. They've been able, Mayor Perez has been able to do it three years in a row. We didn't think it could be done. It was done. Thank you, Council, for agreeing with all the hard work that the mayor and Terry Hansen have done. And Alder Magisha. Thank you. Um, I echo the sentiments of Alderperson Montemayor and everyone else. It, it, uh, it was pretty difficult. Uh, I know, Mayor, you went through a lot of trials and tribulations. I, too, didn't support the changes in the last two amendments, but uh, they were small in comparison to the, the large extent in which I do agree with. Um, and I think you've said it a few times yourself and uh, other aldermen as well. It's not going to get any easier, unfortunately. Um, and the public should be aware of that. This budget takes a pretty good chunk of money out of Department of Public Works. It's, it, there's a, I think there's a substantial reduction there. And uh, I don't know if that could be increased in the future or other departments down in the future, but costs are going up. And you've said it a million times, Mayor Perez, our income is not. And uh, it's going to get more challenging for this council and future councils and for, for you uh, moving forward. It's, it's a difficult time, and it's going to get worse. And I just want the public to be forewarned that this type of work, I think, was remarkable what happened with the budget, with the deficit or the whatever you want to call it. We argue about the term deficit uh, and how it's better now. And, and everybody worked real hard on it. But, each year, it, it's just going to get a lot tighter, and the public should, I guess we ask them to bear with us, because there may need necessarily be some changes in the future that we'll ask for their support on. Thank you. Well said. And on a final note, I'd just like to make some points. Uh, I think it's important for the people to hear very clearly what Alderman Gisha has said, what Alderman Rinsflesh has said, uh, what the other Aldermen have said, Alderman Montemayor. Uh, you're absolutely correct. It's not going to get any easier. Uh, what we've done is a, 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 what I uh, jokingly say is a lot of magic. We, we put together a lot of magic for these last uh, four budgets, uh, 2006 to 2009. We've been able to find a, to get to a balanced budget. Um, Alderman Rensplaz, you're correct. A lot of people may not understand it. Six months worth of work. The final product is now. It's hard to appreciate all the blood and sweat and tears that went into it, but it's finally here. I want to thank the council for their support. Uh, again, it hasn't been all agreeable. That's okay. We, we, we've got a, a balanced budget. We, uh, we can move forward on uh, now. I would like to just point out, though, that the, uh, that the, the, the work that we did is, is commendable because we did that as a team. If you, if you think back historically, in 2006, the request that came in uh, far exceeded the amount of revenue that we we're going to have. Uh, and we were able to uh, sort of chip off almost $2 million in 2006. Now, when I say $2 million, that's $2 million that are, in effect, a cost saving to the taxpayer that uh, they did not have to bear. Uh, our levy then was $20, uh, 20 million, about $20.5 million then. In 2007, uh, the request again came in um, more than the revenue that we, we would uh, receive. 
And again, the difference was about $2 million. So we were able to chisel $2 million in 2007 so that we could provide a cost savings to the, uh, the public. The levy then was $2 million, uh, $20 million 639, which is again identical from 2006, meaning we haven't increased, we didn't increase the levy, which again is a tax uh, uh, savings to the taxpayer. In 2008, again, the uh, requests were 37 million by 37 and a half million. The final numbers were 34 and a half million, so we chiseled off a little over $3 million in 2008. That's huge. That's a, an, an amount that we saved to the uh, taxpayer again. In 2009, again, the requests were $36 million, and the amount, the final one, is uh, uh, about $1.3 million uh, that we were able to chisel off of there. So if you look at the total from 2006, 7, 8, and 9, the amount that we were able to chisel off, the normal increases that the department had, the departments had had was about $8.5 million. That's very, very commendable. Uh, it's taken a lot of hard work. Not one person by themselves can do it. It takes all of us to do it. But the good point I want to make, though, is if you look at the levy, 2006 was 20 million and a half, 2007, 20 million and a half, 2008, almost 20 million and a half, 2009, a little over 20 million and a half. Our levy has remained fairly consistent. Uh, what does that mean? That means that people are saving taxpayer or saving tax dollars, and that is very impressive. The other thing I wanted to, uh, to point out is that our levy limit uh, by statute is, is $22,212. We came in this year at $20,958. So it's a considerable amount of money that we could, by statute, have imposed on the taxpayer, which you chose not to do. And you've maintained that responsiveness to the taxpayer that they have uh, so pleaded uh, uh, hard for. A couple of final notes. Our general operating budget for 2008 was 34 million and a half. For 2009, our budget is 36 million 223,590. That's our general operating budget. Okay, and that includes general fund, library, debt service, transit. Okay, those are the things that it includes. Our total budget is 61 million 228,019. That includes. Uh, general fund, capital project, debt service, special revenue, and transit levy. So our general operating budget is 36 million. Our total budget is about 61 million. That's what we have to deal for, uh, with. It's a big job. It's not nickels and dimes. It's a huge job and a huge responsibility. And I believe, and I can say this uh, truthfully, we have been and will continue to be good stewards of the taxpayer dollars. Council, <coughs> thank you very much. Oh, final word, oh, Mr. President Board. I was just going to mention, uh, Your Honor, the thing, that's, the thing that's remarkable about this over the years is that we, uh, due to the, the hard work of our uh, city employees working harder and smarter, we haven't had to cut any core services in the city. So we were able to, we were able to make almost $8.5 million in cuts without any, without any core services being cut. And I think that's outstanding. And that's, again, taking our hats off to our city employees for working harder and smarter. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> On the budget, as amended, please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? <coughs> Excuse Aye. me? Thank you. Bourne? Aye. Gisha? Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Vote is unanimous. Oh, President Hannah, motion to adjourn. Mr. Mayor, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned. <laughs>